Uh, an Illinois Bell pole. This bo this uh, this pole can play, uh, Wes. Uh, he could really zip the, the football. And, and, uh, and on Elgin, uh, what they like to do is they like to, the quick little slant pass. They like um, uh, to throw it, you know, with, with Hyatt and uh, Sayavong. They've been splitting duties at, at the quarterback position to try and hit their receivers, uh, Brady Bailey and, and Jake Kilgore, with, you know, with little quick passes, you know, and, uh, and run outside with, with Ron Washington and then go hard up the middle with Eric Boney so it confuses them a little bit. But they're small and quick. And we're just about a few minutes away from kickoff. Larkin will receive. You can always tell, Joe, when the, uh, when the referee adjusts that large belt buckle of his, you're usually within 45 seconds of a kickoff. Yeah, uh, you know about the... <laughs> we, got a, we got a great uh, great look at the referee's uh, point of view uh, with, uh, with, Wes in the, with Wes in the booth. Receivers coming out into field now. Officials positioning the ball. Everybody's at that state of waiting for that first clash of equipment. And Boney's going to get ready to kick it off for the Maroons. Uh, the deep backs for uh, the Royals is Schneider and Isert. The two junior uh, tailbacks for Larkin. And we're getting all set for an upstate eight battle. These two teams hate each other. They want to walk away with the win and uh, carry it into next year. Four and four teams. Who's going to wind up on top? It's a deep drop. And it looks like Jimmy Schneider will take it at about the goal line. Gets to the 10 yard line. He finds a little hole. And then he's knotted up at the 20 yard line. And that's where the Larkins will start right off the bat. Tripped up nicely. A couple of white shirts in on that play. That were Andy Poison. Probably putting the final stopper on him. And uh, Elgin will be in the, the white, all white uniforms with maroon trim. Larkin in their blue jerseys and gray pants will come out first and 10 at the 21 yard line. Green Hagel behind his center, Don Kaufman. Full house backfield and it goes a pitch. And he goes out to Schneider. Schneider's got a lot of room and he makes it all the way out to about the 35 yard line. 30, call to 34. Very nice. Gain of 13. Sweet. Very nice play, Joe. Carrington in on the tackle, knocking him out of bounds for a very, very, very nice gain. Looks like it's going to be very close. Uh, was, a, was a first down. First down. At the 32-yard line. And uh, one thing uh, that they like to do, Larkin, is they like to run that wishbone. And when you got a 6'5 guy ru running out there, uh, some of those defensive linemen aren't even that big, Wes. That's for sure. Here's the handoff, straight up the middle. Looks like it goes to Iser. Okay, a little, little belly series struggles. up the middle, Joe. Everybody getting involved on in that play. Scott Davis in on the tackle. Dan Tripp in there. Just a little quick opener. Looks like a gain of about four yards on that play. And we already seen a, a maroon and a royal sort of butt heads uh, after the play, so uh, they want to establish uh, who's the king of Elgin. You're right, Green Hale will take it. Uh, second down and seven at the 36-yard line. Little movement on the line, and there's the flags. Right, we got a little movement there. Whether the center waggled that ball or not, we'll wait for it officially. He's checking on his umpire now. There's his, uh, we got a dead ball. We got a false start on the offense. It cost him five yards. Still will be second down, Joe. And uh, I think he picked it up uh, all the way here uh, from this uh, vantage point. Uh, we're looking through a plexiglass window. So uh, it's a it's a little foggy. It's not uh, crystal clear like the one next to us or, or the ones in the official scores, but uh, I think we're going to manage to pick up these numbers. Joe, I think this glass was used on the uh, Gemini capsule mission before they gave it to us here. And it's got a few scratches. Green Hagel, second and 11 from the 32. It's a quick pass. And he hits his wide receiver for a nice pass. Joan Lazar. And a uh, nice pass by Green Hagel. We've seen how strong his arm is there. Derek Coney in on the stop. Joe make a very sure tackle, hitting them right below the waist, coming down those legs. Nice quick opener. Okay, third and one at the 41-yard line, and uh, already we've seen uh, that Green Hagel's got no problem uh, seeing over anybody. He's mixing his plays up nicely, Joe. Green Hagel under Kaufman, full house backfield. He's got the pitch. Hood pitches it out to, to uh, Iser, and he's got the first down. 
Waited to the last minute to dish it off, Wes. Yeah, he sure did. Very nice play. Drawing in that uh, defensive man to him and uh, making a nice sweep, shooting up for the first down, and Jay Kilgore coming up for the, the bump out of bounds. So a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Larkin moving the ball nicely. Like you said, a nice play selection. This team uh, has been putting some points on the board. Scored 21 versus a tough DeKalb team. That DeKalb, uh, first place in the Upstate 8 with a 5-1 record. They're playoff bound. We got a little equipment timeout, Joe. Coming back in, probably his chin strap. Quick change. Rob Walker's coming back in. Got a hand up saying, let me get all those straps snapped, ref, before you blow that horn. And uh, the referee's sort of making sure that everything uh, looks pretty good. Here he is, he's checking Walker. Saying, you got it on there all right? Here, let me help you. The yeah, official's responsible for that, Joe, as you know, that uh, the play doesn't start until all the chin straps are in place. Okay, here we go. First and 10 at the 49-yard line. Larkin looking good right off the bat. Green Hagel drops back to pass. He's got a man, and it's just overshot. Brett Nemers couldn't go up there and make the grab. Uh, uh, Green Hagel a lot, had a lot, of, a lot of juice on that ball. Well, well prone, Joe. I, I think Numbers is a little bit uh, disturbed, disgusted with himself. He realizes he should have had that one. The well thrown ball, defender looking for maybe the deep post pattern, and Nemers turned up down 10 yards, and he was wide open. It was well thrown ball, and uh, I don't think you'll see that happen again tonight with Nemers. Hit him in the hands and have him drop one like that. That's right, Nemers 6 3. Uh, still couldn't even get up for that one, so uh, it's a little high. Green Hagel on the pitch. He's got plenty of room, good blocking. He makes it all the way to the 38-yard line of Elgin. Nice run by Green Hagel. Dan Tripp in on the tackle, Joe. Same little option play that we saw two, two three plays back here that worked so successfully, and here we have another game. It's going to be enough, enough for the first down. And this Green Hagel can run the ball. He's averaging 5.6 yards a carry. That's an incredible stat. He's ran the ball 64 times. They're 358 yards. This kid can run as well as throw. Here's the handoff. Right up the middle, goes to Schneider. And he gains about, let's call it three yards, second and seven. Very nice fake from the quarterback on that play. Bob Petrie coming off on the tackle there, one at the bottom of the pile, getting up. He read it well, pushed his blocker off, and was in there to get an arm load of runner. Well, it looks like uh, Larkin's size is, is able to control uh, the line of scrimmage so far because Green Hagel hasn't gotten touched once he went back to pass and uh, they've been able to uh, throw a few blocks in there. Green Hagel on the draw, goes to Taylon and he doesn't get anywhere as the Elgin front line stacks him up very nicely. Didn't fool anyone on that one at all, Joe. But Scott Davis read that very well. Second down play, maybe didn't really believe it was going to be a pass play and they smelled out that draw very quickly. That's right, it was a good job by the Elgin defensive line not biting on the draw. So we're looking at a third and eight from the 37 yard line. Green Hagel's got numbers all the way on the far side. Full house backfield, drops back to pass. Looks to his tight end and he completes it. That was a heck of a pass to Tim Lickner, the tight end. Well thrown ball, well thrown ball, which should be enough for the we're gonna maybe take a look at it as far as the referee. Yes, he says it is a first down measurement. It's it's good enough for a first down, yes. What did you think of that call? I thought it was a great it call, It was a West. very gutsy call. He really, a uh, well-thrown ball, well-thrown ball. A good, good protection came back, threw it when his man was open. He didn't, he didn't let the zone close on him. First and 10 at the 26, and uh, Elgin might have uh, jumped a little offside trying to, uh, trying to create a big play. Yeah, they were getting a little bit anxious there. Dead ball foul, encroachment by the defense. It'll cost him five. They were a little anxious, thought they thought they spotted something. Very good cadence out there, probably by the quarterback. So first and five at the 21. Larkin creeping towards pay dirt. Green Hagel keeps it on a snap. He Beautiful can go play. all the way. Beautiful He's play, a strong Joe. kid, and he just barely makes it to the one yard line. Awesome running by Roger Green Hagel. Uh, the, the big guy can lumber. A beautiful play. If they had training wheels on that, they would have allowed a touchdown, but uh, they don't, I guess. 
I thought with that uh, six five frame of his, that uh, he might. I think you can lunge from about the the seven or eight yard line he and, sure, and he uh, sure still did get that, that touchdown. Play. Very nice. We got the first and goal, and they've had a very nice drive put together here on their first and goal. That's a two. Green Hagel behind Kaufman, the center, full house backfield. It goes to Schneider, and we got a flag. We're gonna and flag I don't believe he made there. it in. We we're looking like we had a little bit motion a little bit early on one of those backs, and the, the referee picked it up. He's going to explain the options now to the defense. And being that deep, let's see what their decision is. Maybe the boys are going to decide, let's push them back. We don't want them too close to pay dirt here. The referee's explaining the option now. Gentlemen, you want it second and goal from maybe the three here, or are you going back? All right, we're going to push them back. Joe, it looks to be by what? Is that about the eight-yard line? Yeah, first and, uh, it'll be first and goal from the eight, Wes. They got numbers flanked all the way out to the right side. One on one with uh, LeBrian Carrington. Green Hagel on the keeper. Looking for some uh, room on the outside, and he's gang tackled by about three or four Maroons. A couple of white shirts in there. Dan Tripp made a very nice move, swarming in there with two other tacklers. To, uh, they, they sniffed that one out very early. They, uh, they smelled that one just like they smelled the draw. Uh, Green Hagel went uh, to the option uh, one too many times on that play. You're right. Here's, here's a big call, Joe. What do you think? Here, here's the one. Here's a big call coming up. Well, second and eight, uh, I think uh, what you have to probably try and do is uh, you've been able to run the ball consistently. Uh, you got a full house backfield with Taylon, Snyder, and Eisert. These guys are all averaging over four yards a carry. Green Hagel drops back to pass, scrambles, pull down, and it's incomplete. Complete pass, uh, obviously not in the grass, but have you? He was still charging. Very nice block thrown in the in the backfield there uh, by number 88. Help me on that, Joe. Is that uh, was that? No, that wasn't Emerson on that. I'm sorry. It's one of, one of the backs that on the roll out there threw a very key block there to give him a little extra time on that pass. Again, uh, Green Hangle with a lot of protection. Uh, the Maroons just can't seem to can't seem to grab him. Yeah, they made a very nice march here in this opening series all the way down the field, and now we've seen to hit a little incline in the hill. And uh, uh, big third down play, Joe. That it is. Third and goal from the eight yard line. Green Hagel underneath Don Koff in the center. Three guys in the backfield. Green Hagel's looking towards number. He's in the end zone. Let's see if they rule it. Will the referee rule it incomplete? Out of bounds, incomplete. Uh, well thrown pass. I think he just literally ran out of real estate down there. That that that, uh, that, that dark cornerback there. It, uh, he was open, but uh, time and distance. He just ran out of room. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, the dark corner, uh, the coffin corner. Halloween's coming right around the corner, so I think uh, we could use that term. 5:43 in this first quarter, Joe. We've uh, got a timeout being called on the field. That will be timeout Larkin. Well, I think maybe what Ray Haley is trying to say to his, to his troops is uh, let's remember the next time we get it down this close that we're going to execute and we're, we're not going to try and get into uh, third, and, third and long and uh, second and long. Coach Gary Ebert on the field for the Maroons who, uh, who uh, handled themselves nicely uh, down, around the, down around the goal line. They surely did, Joe. They put up a good stance. They didn't get rattled. They uh, just had a team go downfield on them, a good 60-yard-plus uh, march, and uh, held them off on a couple of nice sweeps, uh, a little option-type play here on pass. It didn't fool them at all, well, well covered. And uh, here we have fourth down. And uh, likewise, uh, Offense is not going to be fooled either here. They, they want to get something out of this here. So uh, we're looking at the old foot coming into action here and see if we can come away with at least three points on this. Sure. Uh, I think you have to come up with something. Otherwise, uh, a, a big turnaround for the Maroons. Uh, they got to be happy, uh, you know, with just giving up three, uh, you know, when you got it first and goal at the two, you know. Any way you look at it, you got to be happy coming away with three when you have a first and goal at the two. You can see the... Uh, the effect of the weather a beautiful night here and Joe, good, for good it. footing on the runs what have you and yes sir you're right they are going to go for it so let's see here i don't know if they don't like todd sinkle their kicker or, or what the story is here 
Uh oh, we have some more movement. I think. No, we they. Uh, you're right. They're going to kill it on that. The uh, the official threw the flag. They figured that he broke the neutral zone. You'll see that play in college quite often, and uh, particularly even on the pro level, you know, where you have the opportunity to get back. But if you're breaking that neutral zone, uh, it's going to be a flag. And here we have a penalty on the defense. And uh, I think it's a good thing for whoever's on that since. Uh, <coughs> This is the last ball game, and they're, you're really not going to get chewed out. I mean, uh, there's not another week of practice after this. That's right. This is important, particularly for some of the seniors on this ball okay, club. Okay, Greenhagel behind Kaufman. Pitches it out to Schneider. He cuts it all the way to the outside, and he gets nailed by a maroon. And he's going to be short, and, of course, we're going to turn over the ball. Nice reaction by the maroons on that play. Uh, Got Carrington in on the tackle. We had about three white shirts over there making some very nice hits out of bounds, and they, they read that play very well. They stretched it out real nice. Uh, LeBron Carrington in on that tackle, and uh, he, uh, he got Jimmy Schneider pretty good. 5.30 coming up on the clock. Joe, and we're, uh, we're pointing the ship the other way. We're going to see what the, uh, the Elgin Maroons can do with the ball. Their turn at offense. And the offensive line, again, stretching out the hands. Highest to quarterback behind Dan Tripp, the center. And it's just a quick little handoff to Ron Washington who just tries to get out of that deep part of the, the field. And uh, he gains about three yards on that play for Ronnie Washington. Okay, a host of blue tacklers up the middle on that quick opener there. It's uh And uh, one guy that uh, Coach Stevens uh, mentioned was Brian Ro the nose guard. Uh, an all-state wrestler, maybe one of the top wrestlers in the state of Illinois. Hyatt ducks behind a center trip, split backfield, receivers on the near side. And it's just a quick little handoff for a gain of uh, about another two or three yards. I believe it was uh, Ronnie Washington again that got the call. Nibbling away, picked up a, a couple more. Joe, looks like maybe a third down play and a long, maybe a four, third and four, huh? Yeah, we're looking at about a third and four. Hyatt breaks up, breaks out of the huddle. The Maroons offensive line spaces themselves out. He ducks under trip. Third and three. Hyatt, quick little handoff. And uh, it's gonna be close. Yeah, it looks like fourth down. Joey picked up a yard or so, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be fourth down and a long yard. Fourth down, looks like the kicking team is coming in. And uh, they gave that handoff to Rob Walker. He's a linebacker on the defense. They like him in short yardage situations. But uh, could only get two of the three yards that they needed for the first down. So Boney, Eric Boney will drop back to punt. Eisen Schneider and Iser. Yeah, the two, the two specialists, huh? Yep. Okay, here's the snap. It was a high snap. Boney did a nice job pulling that one down. Sure, it's a high got kick. A good foot into that ball. And Let it's gonna bounce. take a royal bounce. And it's going to be down right about the 45-yard line. So Larkin, good field position. They were able to move the ball on their last drive when they started at the 21. Now they're at the 45, a little bit closer as Green Hagel runs out to his boys. Maybe a, a conservative start, but we certainly aren't going to fault that. They decided to keep that ball on the ground. They're deep in their own territory. They don't want to put one up in the air and have it picked off that this early in the match. We're coming down to three minutes on this first quarter. Okay, Greenhagel, the number's on the far side. And uh, the give is to Taylon, the fullback, and he gets about four. And Carl Taylon is a very good runner for the Royals. He's rushed the ball 56 times for 229 yards this year, a 4.1 average, and he is the leading tackler on the defense. This guy doesn't like to come off the field. Okay, Green Hagel looks, and they fake it on. It's intercepted by Elton. A lot of wheels, a lot of wheels, out of bounds. Okay. Big play, big play. Boulay Darren Acone picked it off, and the Elgin Maroons get the first turnover of the ball game. Boulay Darren Acone. Well, Joe, we talk about being conservative deep in your own territory, kicking the ball out of trouble, and come right back and grab it off and boy you're back in the driver's seat all of a sudden 50 yards further up the field uh seen uh, green hagel was looking for numbers uh darren Acone read that one 
And uh, Fet Sayabong is the quarterback for the Maroons. Two guys in the backfield, two receivers to the far side. And it's a handoff to Boney. He's got a lot of room on that far side. Nice cut back. And a nice run. Gain of about eight yards. He'll get to the 27-yard line. Good run by Eric Boney. Uh, like I mentioned, Wes, uh, they got Keith Hyatt in there and also uh, Fet Sayabong. And uh, both quarterbacks were in the, in the passing league uh, that they have over the summer and uh, were very impressive. Sayabong under trip. Two runners in the backfield. It's a handoff to number 30. Ronnie Washington. Nice cutback on that play, Joe. Picked up a couple, running behind his blocker very nicely. One thing uh, Coach Stevens was saying was that uh, he hopes that his uh, running backs can get to the outside. That, li Larkin, that Larkin is very large up front, as we mentioned. And uh, they're going to try and get to that outside like they did with Boney, like they did with Ronnie Washington. Okay, third down, one yard to go, ball on the 25-yard line. That's Sayabong. Split backfield, receivers draped left and right, and they hammer it right up the middle, and it looks like... They're very close to the first down. They got the first down. First down, Joe, right. Brian Carrington was the, was the man on uh, that carry. Coach Stevens says, nice job there, Brian. 25-yard line, first down, and they're on the move. Oh, what an interception. And what a nice interception that was by Darren Oconey to give Elgin good field position. Sayabong, same formation. And the handoff goes to Washington, and he isn't going nowhere because about four Larkin front linemen, Brian Rose and company, were all over him. <laughs> a little bit of a brick wall entered into that situation. But, uh, that play just uh, couldn't get anything uh, as the Larkin front line, the Royals, who held the Kelb to minus six rushing yards last week. This is a very good Larkin defense. Brian minus Rose, 6'3", 265. It's a, a lot of brick wall to run into. And about 260 pounds. There's uh, about two seconds, one second. We're not going to get the first quarter. We're not going to get that play off before the first quarter ends. So we got a 0-0 score between the, the Maroons and the Royals, an upstate eight battle of cross-town rivalry. We'll be back with uh, the second quarter action right after this. Okay, 0-0 score. We're in the second quarter. Elgin's on the march with the, the Maroons and the Royals. I'm Joe Snydoff sitting alongside Wes Pollander. And uh, we, are, we have ourselves a ball game, Wes. Yeah, we really do. Basically, we've had, you know, like uh, two main possessions, you know, move to one end of the field. And, uh, the Royals taking their opening kickoff and uh, going all the way down to uh, first and goal on the three, a couple unfortunate penalties. And uh, the Elgin Maroons come back and had their opportunity of possession, didn't do anything, had to get rid of the ball. and. Made an interception, and now we're on the play. Sayabong, a quick pitch to Boney. Turns to the outside, and he gains about three. Driven out of bounds with a nice sweep. Kind of ran out of field. A lot of blue shirts over there. They Good pursuit, good pursuit. They. And we've got an injured Maroon on the field. Coach Stevens and Scott Davis looking to see if he's okay. And uh, we can't pick up a number right away. Might have been an offensive lineman on that power sweep. But Elgin so far doing a nice job. They're not supposed to be able to run on this Larkin team who, who's just fantastic against the run. They might be susceptible to the pass, but one thing we know is that the, the Royals can stop the run. But it seemed like that, that, that turnover, that interception by uh, Darren Oconey, turn things around for the Maroons because it looked like uh, they were going to go down, you know, 7-zip uh, real quick. Paul Pennington down for the Maroons. And he gets helped off the field. I think they were very patient on that first possession, Joe, like we mentioned, uh, deep in their own territory. They had to kick that ball away and here the very first series, second player so made that excellent interception, brought it back into a uh, midfield situation and have that ball now it's just uh, into the first minute or so of the second quarter and uh, somewhat in the driver's seat right now uh, let's let's see how they're going to do it i think uh, sometimes conservative play uh, is a plus sayabong underneath the center 
He's got receiver draped left and right, and then we're going to get a reverse. And uh, it's not going anywhere because uh, the Royals are all over the place. They read that one well a little bit. The line broke down a little bit early on that, and uh, Larkin wasn't fooled by that. Uh, maybe execution was a little bit delayed on that by the time that reverse started. Uh, about five or six blue shirts in the backfield. Joel Josser, the number one first tackler in there to read that very nicely. And I think uh, the key word was delayed. It just seemed to, it just didn't seem to get off the ground. So we're going to have a field goal. This is going to be a lot of toe getting into this one, Joe. Yes, Looks about we're maybe the 30. We're looking at about a 48-yard about a field goal by Boney, and it looks short. Just barely. Just barely short. It's a good toe. Good toe with a little breeze, which we mentioned is not there this evening. Uh, he had very good direction on that. Get a, got a good foot into it, but it just wasn't there. No, uh, he, he just missed that. A 43-yard field goal attempt. Goes nil for the Maroons. And Larkin will take over. So both teams get close, but uh, can't stick it in somehow, some way, either in, uh, in the end zone or through the uprights. First down for the Larkin Royals show. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. Green Hagel. Quick hitter up the middle to Taylon and. Uh, he got maybe about a half a yard, maybe a yard. Dan Tripp, one of the tacklers in on there, made a very good read. Didn't get fooled at all by that movement off to the right side. And it seems that that, that uh, the, the, wet, the wishbone, Wes, uh, gives you like about three or four fakes uh, on every play. That's true. That's true. So Green Hagel keeps the option, and it goes out to... Uh, Snyder and uh, the Maroons stack him up in the backfield. Carrington in a tackle. He made a one nice shoestring tackle and held on for dear life and brought that man down. We've seen uh, LeBron Carrington make a couple nice tackles. Once over here uh, and a nice tackle on Schneider and then uh, earlier in the first quarter when uh, when they were trying to go for it on, a, on the fourth down play there, uh, Carrington hit him real hard. He's a good hitter. He's a good hitter out there. So we're looking at third and ten. Ball on the 22-yard line, and uh, Larkin's uh, run into a little bit of a rut. Green Hagel back to pass, plenty of time, and he airs it out Big long R. to Brett Nemers, and it's almost intercepted. Maybe had his receiver turned around the wrong way on that. Uh, no fault of either. Uh, Well-thrown ball, a little deep. Receiver had to turn around. Joe, who'd we have that deep on that? Uh, he, was, he was looking for Brett Nemers on that. That's okay. his main man on, on the fly pattern. Nemers kind of got that one over on the inside shoulder and was looking out towards the sideline and had to do a little bit of a stutter step and the ball looked like it might have hit him on the pad. Ron Washington and uh, LeBron Carrington are the deep backs for the Maroons. Brett Nemers, the punter, averaging 32 yards a boot. Two-step drop, lefty boot. It's a line drive kick, and Washington will take it. Heads up the middle, finds a little seaman, and he gets stacked up at about the 48-yard line. First and 10 for the Maroons. This time they have good field position. Fred, you're Ribby in on that tackle. So, Coach Stevens' club will come out. Pat Sayavong, the quarterback. He'll uh, switch quarterbacks off and on. And he sends uh, Jake Kilgore, the lone wide receiver, out to the near side. Split backfield with Boney in Washington. Sayavong parks out the signals. And it's just a handoff. And uh, Washington gets some good carry, gets some good yards. About maybe a quick hitter up the middle for about about seven yards. Yeah, Brett Nimmer's in on that tackle. Very nice first down play. Eating up a lot of yardage, leaving a little bumper here for second and maybe a long two. And that might have been Eric Boney on that tackle. Uh, the plexiglass uh, giving us a few problems uh, number-wise. Sayavong, second and two from the 39-yard line. Receiver to the far side. It's just a quick little handoff. It's to Boney, and he cuts it up the middle. He's got all the whole sideline, and he slips and fells. Ryan Stewart finally just laid a hand on him after Boney slipped. Jay Kilgore stepped into the picture there, Josh. 
throwing a very nice block right up the middle to spring that run for about another extra six to ten yards. Very nice block by Kilgore. It was a nice block by Kilgore. We've seen him uh, play very well against West Aurora and a few other teams. So we're looking at a first and ten ball on a 29-yard line after a good run by Eric Boney. Sayavon with the split backfield. It's just a quick hitter up, to, up the middle to LeBrian Carrington. And he gets about five. Just a quick hitter to Carrington. Looks like uh, Brian Rose in on that tackle. Uh, looks like that was sheer strength on picking up that uh, three or four yards. And uh, very impressed with uh, Elgin's quickness in the backfield. Uh, not much height back there with uh, Ronnie Washington and uh, Boney and Carrington, uh, even Rob Walker, but uh, very quick, Wes. Sayavong, second and seven from the 26-yard line. Ducks under trip. Quick hitter up to Washington. He keeps it himself. Nice little option play, Joe. A bunch of blue jerseys there pulling up off the pile. You've got uh, Brian Rose again in there helping. Uh, you're talking about that quickness in the backfield. I think they might be setting them up for something here. We look like we do a couple of quick openers up the middle here. I'm looking for that sweep coming to our side of the field here, Joe. A sweep to the left. We've got a little bit more feel on this side yet, and uh, I think we might be softening them up for a little sweep. Elgin runs uh, the split beer option. So they uh, either uh, go with the little quick hitter or, or, or the slant over the middle. Sayavong, third and three from the 22. Big play here. And it looks like we have some movement on the line. Washington with a big hole. LeBrian Carrington make it. Nice play. That looks like it will be enough for a first down. Very nice play. Stepped in very nicely on that. Looked like he could have gone either wide on that one, but he saw that opening up the middle and a couple quick chop steps and he was gone. Well, uh, LeBrian Carrington, we've seen him pound out that quick five with a lot of speed and, and, and as you mentioned, uh, some quick choppy steps and, and uh, he took it to the near side and there was a, a lot of daylight, West. He's looking very good tonight. Okay, Fet Saivong. Split backfield, Jay Kilgore, the lone receiver on the near side. It's right up the box and it goes to Bumble. Yeah, and Bumble's and Royals pick it up. And recovered by Larkin Blue. Uh, Washington with a burst of speed up the middle. It looked like he might have a shot at going in uh, for the touchdown if he could uh, uh, elude a, a cornerback or a free safety there. But somebody stuck him and stuck him real hard yeah, and put the helmet on the ball. They certainly did. You know, a big hard pop there. It just came loose. He didn't even have an opportunity to take a wild swing at that ball to recover it. A tough break. Looks like it was right at the two-yard line on that fumble. And, of course, uh, Larkin's taking over. Uh, deep in their own territory, but they prevented a score, and we're coming up at five minutes and 50 seconds here in the second quarter. So uh, the turnovers have been uh, the bugaboo for both teams as they've driven far and haven't been able to go anywhere. To give it to Schneider, and uh, he got about four yards on the play. Call it second and five. Ball at the 10-yard line. But it seemed like uh, when uh, Ronnie Washington got hit on that play, uh, the ball uh, bounced right into a Larkin defender's arm. It didn't, it didn't hit the ground. It didn't roll in the end zone or anywhere. Uh, they just wound up with it. Green Hagel then hands it off to Iser, And uh, he just musters uh, a few yards. Good move by Iser. He didn't really have anywhere to go on that. In fact, he looked like he might have even bumped into the back of one of his own blockers on that. But he was a, a good power runner. He kept the legs churning. And uh, they just had to cut him down early, maybe after a, a gain of three or four. Iser, one of those... Uh, Three runners in the backfield behind Green Hagel. He's averaging 4.8 yards a carry and a 16 yard average per catch. So uh, I haven't seen Green Hagel throw to any of the backs uh, at all this evening. He hasn't thrown uh, just to numbers, I think just a few times. And uh, you got to wonder if uh, Green Hagel's going to air it out. You know what I mean? A couple substitutions coming in for Elgin. Hyatt uh, going out. And uh, it was Green Hagel on a keeper. And uh, he lunged because he's very big for the first down. First and 10 at the 19-yard line for the Larkin Royals. Crowd into this ball game. It's an uh, intertown battle. The bragging rights, the jug, the whole thing. Green Hagel pump fakes once. He drops back. He lost a big one for numbers, and he's got him. Beautiful pass. Beautiful pass. A long bomb. Oh, big one. 
two defenders back and just well enough thrown over the defense's outstretched arms. A nicely thrown ball and Nevers took it nicely on the stride. Big Green play. Hagel, Green Hagel with the pump fake and a 45-yard bomb to his main man, his buddy, Brett Nevers. You don't see those thrown any better even on Sunday, Joe. No, that was right on the money, Wes. And I'll be looking. Uh, I'll be looking Sunday for a few bombs. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see who comes up big. But right now it's uh, Larkin who came up big. Green Hagel on the option. Good gain of about six yards. Tuck that ball in nicely. Uh, just come, come downfield with a big play like that. That's uh, no time to even risk a fumble or anything on that option play. He stuffed it in his old tummy and hung onto it and made a nice gain. And uh, Coach Stevens was saying that uh, this is. Uh, this is a very tough team to prepare for offensively because they won the, they run the wishbone, but yet they open it up with the pass uh, with Roger Greenhagel. And he hands it off the middle to Schneider. And he powers for about four yards, very close to a first down. I'm going to kill a clock on that and take a good look at that one, Joe. That one's close enough. First down, the referee says. And we're coming up to three minutes in the second quarter. Royals running the show here after... Uh, Elgin turned the ball on a fumble at around the two-yard line. Ronnie Washington got popped and it went right into a Royal defender. Green Hagel under Kaufman gives the pitch off to Iser. No, it's Schneider. Oh, man, did he get labeled by, take a guess, West. It's LeBrian Carrington, number 33. Another, another nice move. Carrington a little bit high on that tackle, but uh, he had other teammates pursuing him from the rear, so there was going to be a no gain in that play. Another, another nice hit by Carrington. Oh, that was a very nice hit. Uh, he put uh, the helmet to the helmet right there on uh, Mr. Schneider. So we're looking at a second and 12. Ball on the 25-yard line. They lost a few there. Green Hagel drops back to pass. Oh, and it's uh, almost intercepted. Nicely thrown ball, Joe. The re receiver on that intended receiver kind of slipped and went down, and a uh, bunch of white shirts had a chance at it, but uh, no one was able to hold on to that. Ball was intended for number 80, Tim Lickner. They uh, usually uh, use Lickner uh, to just mainly block it. You know, the tight end in the wishbone uh, doesn't catch many passes, but uh, still very valuable as like Keith Jackson with Oklahoma and now with the Philadelphia Eagles. So Green Hagel ducks underneath Kaufman and he drops back the pass. Plenty of time and he's got a man wide open. Nicely thrown ball, wide open. Defender kind of sitting back there a little bit loose on that play. Uh, allow him to thread the needle and get that ball in there very nicely. That's Brett Nemers again. And uh, I think uh, the Elgin secondary was concerned uh, with his speed. He just, you know, roasted him for a 45-yard bomb, and uh, they were laying off him a little bit, and all they did was uh, a little hook and curl pattern. So first and 10, ball at the 13-yard line. Larkin looking to draw first blood. The Green Hagel. The big guy underneath the center. We got some movement and we got a flag. We've got a dead ball situation. We kill the play. And it looks like the defense were a little anxious here. Let's see what the referee signals us here. Dead ball foul encroachment by the defense. Five yard penalty and will still be first down. First down and five. Ball at the eight-yard line. You hate to give those away, Joe. And the defense the head coach sees that uh, when you're down there fighting for your life, trying to hold them out, and you give them five yards like that, that that's hard on your grinding teeth. The Maroons want to make a more than a green haggle behind Kaufman. Full house backfield. Nemers out to the far sideline. He's looking for him, and it's uh, oh. broken up very nicely. Looks Brian like Carrington. Carrington again got uh, got in the act nicely. Ball may be slightly underthrown, but uh, he had good protection. Uh, Carrington getting his two hands in there. That good possibility for an interception. That would be uh, enjoyable sitting here, Joe, to watch a 100-yard race going all the way to the north end of the field. And Brian Carrington, 5'9", 153 pounds. A very and uh, get this, uh, only a sophomore. What a, what a nice vertical jump on that one. Okay, Green Hagel, second and five. Ball at the seven. Here we go. It's a quick little handoff to Taylor. No. He keeps it, and he gets very close to the first down. A good idea on the quarterback's part, Joe. He was not going to take a chance there. A little bit too much traffic to worry about the whether he was going to do that last-minute flip. He was going to hold on to that monster. We're going to have a timeout for a measurement. We're that close. And Green Hagel faked the pitch to Taylor up the middle. 
I think a lot of the Maroons bought on the fake, and uh, he had some running room, and uh, he barely, barely stuck it in the end zone. First down, First Royals. Down. Well, the momentum's with Larkin right now. They're, they're on the move. And Larkin just made a substitution. They bring in number 42, Jerome Gostin, a big fullback, 5'11", 251 pounds, along with Carl Talon back there. Oh, man, we got some beef in the backfield. Power back. Talon hands it off to Gostin. And it doesn't look like he got in. Nice, nice reaction by Elgin on that defense-wise. Going to kill that ball. The clock's down to 56 seconds, and Larkin will take a well-chosen timeout. And Coach Ray Haley's going to head out there, talk to uh, his offensive unit, and probably going to mention the last time that I called a timeout. You guys were uh, a few yards away for a touchdown and taking the lead, and uh, you came up short. I don't want to have to come out here again. It's, it's almost like a mom going to tell the kids uh, to quiet down in the living room saying, uh, you better do it uh, because I don't want to be bothered with it. Yeah, interesting to watch this now, Joe. We've seen a very nice mixture of plays in the first quarter by Larkin. Moving the ball nicely, some sweeps, some uh, quick openers, you know, off-tackle runs, throwing the ball nicely. Now we're down here. We're, we've got second down. We've got 56 seconds le left in the clock in the, in, in the first half here. Uh, we need two yards to get us on pay dirt. Uh, what are we going to do, friends? You, you tell me if you've been... 28 years in this coaching game out there talking to your team right now. Uh, let's see how the philosophy bears out. Are we going to be somewhat conservative and keep that ball on the ground? Maybe run the option, but make sure our quarterback hangs on to it. I think this is the interesting facet of, of watching football, seeing that gentleman trot off the field now and say, what is he going to have these young men do? What do you oh. got, Joe? Okay, here we go. Green Hagel, second and two from the goal. Full house backfield. It goes to Eisert. Touchdown, Touchdown. Royal. A nice call, a nice they call. They draw first blood. They draw first blood. A good time to do it, Joe, wouldn't you say, with 53 seconds left? Uh, no better time than the present, Wes. So, very nice, nice call, some good blocking up front. Larkin fans are uh, happy to see that uh, the Royals are up on top. We'll see if the extra point goes through by Todd Cinco. Here's the kick, and it's uh, partially shanked, but it still gets through, and it's good. Okay, 7-0 with 53 seconds left. And I think it uh, seemed like that kick was a little bit a little bit wobbly, but it still made it through the uprights. I think uh, the referee sort of arched his back a certain way to, to sort of get a, you know get the proper view, get the right view to see if it went through, and uh, sure enough, it went through. So... Well, we'll line them up for this kickoff. We have the Larkin fans, many standing here supporting their boys on a very nice scoring drive. Down. I said down. So we'll see if uh, Elgin can come back with, with some kind of drive with 53 seconds remaining. Jerome Goss. So that's where uh, Elgin will try and muster something. We'll see if uh, Sayavong and company uh, elect to open it up or uh, to kneel and say, uh, okay, uh, you got one mark on us, so uh, we're going to come out and get you in the second half. Joe, I'm looking at these Larkin guys' defense coming out onto the field here. These are some big people. It's almost like looking at a Division three or maybe even some Division two schools. These we had a uh, kickoff we'll rather short here, Joe, starting out this uh, last remaining seconds. And Sayavong drops back to pass. He hurls a long one for Jake Kilgore, and he was covered up nicely. Number 87, Brian Edders on the coverage. Good coverage by the Larkin secondary. The left corner for Larkin. So they don't elect to kneel on the, on the uh, kickoff. They say, we're going to open it up. We're, we're, uh, we're not going to play that style of football tonight. Incomplete pass, 20 seconds on the clock at the snap. Second and 10. Saivong, a draw play, goes to Carrington. No, make it phony. Very nice play, very nice run, going to be enough for a first down. 
clock is stopped at 11 seconds in this second quarter. And that was Eric Boney who uh, weeded his way uh, in the middle and then uh, finally broke it to the We got 11 seconds left. First and 10 at the 49 yard line for uh, the Maroons. Coach Stevens uh, elects to take a timeout. Maybe uh, try a sideline pattern or some, something like that. And uh, the Maroons have one more timeout. That's correct, Joe. So uh, I guess what you could probably do is uh, try a quick hitter over the middle. Maybe at around a 30 or something like that. Try and, 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 and hope that only 10 seconds elapses for the clock. We can call the timeout. I don't know. Uh, it seems like uh, you need a little bit more time before I think uh, the referee recognizes and, and spots the timeout. Correct, Joe. Whether you're going to try the same play here and not get too fancy. With 11 seconds left, maybe we're going to have the old Hail Mary deep, but uh, they'd be happy not to do anything silly here and turn the ball over and allow a total return here for a score. But uh, let's see what uh, our Elgin Maroons have in mind here for the last 11 seconds of this of the second quarter. Both coaches now coming off the field. We're getting ready for the referee to blow the whistle for the ready for play. So we'll see 11 seconds. First and 10 at the 49. 7 nothing Larkin. Been a nice first half, Joe. Both defenses uh, rose to the occasion when it came down, uh, came down to the goal line stance. Saivong underneath trip. He's going to drop back about a good 10 yards and he's going to try that Hail Mary. And it's almost picked off, incomplete with five seconds left on the clock. Nice play by the Maroons, trying to find uh, Brady Bailey. Bailey and uh, Greg Weber was also in the area. And, uh, you know, there still would have been five seconds, probably enough time to call a timeout and, uh, and, uh, and attempt a field goal with Boney. Bailey, the wide receiver on this side, was digging deep. He was, uh, he was going all the way down. Okay, Saivong got two receivers to the near side, one all the way to the left. He's just going to isolate on LeBron Carrington. He hits him at the 40, trying to dodge. Time runs out, and he steps out. Out of bounds. A nice, uh, nice return to uh, complete a pass to end the half. So, a defensive first half. 7 nothing Larkin. We'll be back with uh, the second half right after this. Royal 7, the Maroons nothing. I'm Joe Snydoff sitting alongside Wes Collander. In a uh, defensive uh, struggle in the first half, both defenses playing well, and here's the kickoff. Gostin boots it to Washington, line drive kick. Got a wall of maroons. He breaks it to the outside, skips to the inside, and he gets out to the 44-yard line. So Elton will start in some decent field position. Scoring uh, not too much uh, in the first quarter. Uh, 
Larkin came close, Elgin came close, but uh, the defense has held on. Uh, in the second quarter, right before the half, Chris Iser rambled in from two yards out. Uh, Todd Cinco, the kick was good. 7-0, that's where we stand. Saibong, ducks behind Trip. Two in the backfield, and it's a quick hitter to LeBrian Carrington. Crawls on the ground for about 10 yards. Close to a first down, Wes. I take a close look at that play just to see if there was a, uh, a knee touchdown or what have you. It looked like the side official was saying he might have had a knee touchdown. No, they do spot it after a nine-yard game. So Elgin in Larkin territory at the 46, second and one. Sayavong has two wide receivers. That's Brady and Kilgore to the near side. Two men in the backfield. And Sayavong rolls out, drops back to pass. Heaves a pass and is picked off. Beautiful intercept. Pull that interception off very nicely. And we do have a flag on the play, Joe. Possibly, that might have been Rick Short. possibly on the run back here. And it was uh, Ricky Short. Kind of a little off balance throw by the quarterback, Joe. Looked like he, he held on to a little bit, was going to pump fake and threw it off balance. And as a result, it was a little bit short and a very nice, very nice interception made. We had a clip on that run back. So the interception will stand, but we did have a clip on that run back. So it will be uh, first downs for Larkin taking over, moving them back to about their 34 yard line. So Elgin gets stalled by an interception. Greenhagel will bring it out. We'll take a look at the maroon defense. And it's the quick handoff to Carl Talon. Safe play for about four yards. Very good blocking up the middle on that play. And Larkin uh, likes to run the football. Uh, rushing uh, in the first half, Roger Greenhagel carried it six times for 48 yards. So he's, uh, he's doing a great job. Carl Talon. Uh, Four yards on three carries, uh, Chris, or Jimmy Snyder, 22 yards on seven carries, and Chris Eiser, 11 yards on four carries. Green, Green Hagel fakes to Taylon, and it's a big, quick big hole, big hole. Iser. Very nice play for first down and a lot more. Gave him about 14 on the play. So Iser, he with 11 yards, make a, make a 25. Stepped through the hole quickly, Joe, didn't he? Here. Boom, took off. Very quick. Larkin offensive line doing a very nice job. Mark Hornick, Brad Menz, uh, Don Kaufman in the center, Adam Lance and Larry Creedon. Green Hagel, first and 10 at the 49. Option play. Nice spin, nice and, spin uh, move. He spun loose and he gained by uh, about eight yards. We're gonna take a look at that one, Joe. Let's give him a first down, the man with the white, hit, white hat says. Uh, Green Hagel escaped. Uh, a few maroon defenders in the backfield. A nice spin move. Very nice, very nice move for the big fella. So uh, he's got a little bit of agility. He's just not one of those uh, long lugs. And it's uh, Iser up the middle. Don Kaufman at center doing a very nice job of blocking up there. I'm, I'm impressed with some of his blocking. He's doing a nice job on uh, Dan Tripp, the nose guard of Elgin. So we're looking at a second and five. Ball on the 32-yard line, eight minutes. Notice that flanker going out there, Joe. They just seem to be ignoring him that this first series until all of a sudden they decide, boom, come alive. They're trying to put that defensive man to sleep a little, I think. Green Hagel on the option. He's hit. We got a fumble. And Elgin recovers. That was a recovery by Rob Walker. Uh, the Maroon defense came in. Uh, Green Hagel was, uh, was hit as he tried to make the pitch. And uh, exactly, exactly. the Maroons come up big. So. Uh, Another bam, bam. another turnover, Joe. Another one of those things we're not supposed to talk about. Turnovers. <laughs> uh, nobody uh, nobody figures those uh, coming into the contest, but uh, you don't like that term turnover when you're a coach. And it happens to you. They're a big part of the game. So Sayabong, first and ten on the 36-yard line, to try and mount a maroon attack. Fakes it into the line, keeps it himself, and he gets uh, maybe about uh, a yard. That's being generous. Maybe gets a couple. Brian Rose in, uh, pulling him down from behind. So uh, we'll see if uh, Elgin elects to uh, open it up here because uh, it seems like uh, they haven't been able to do anything on the ground. We got Carrington with 10 yards in the first half, uh, Rob Walker with four. Uh, Boney was, is the big guy, uh, 47 yards on six carries, a couple nice runs uh, up the box. 
Second and a long Washington. nine here, Joe. Second and nine at the 37, Sayabong. And uh, he gives a quick hitter to Boney. Nice inside handoff. Stretched for a couple more yards, but it a, a, a nice diving move after as he lost his balance. Very nice run. Picked up at least six or seven there. Almost looked like a, a misdirection play. Exactly. A little inside handoff there, and he uh, he exploded nicely. There's some very nice uh, line play going on here on both sides of the line. We'll, we'll see who will come up on top. Uh, so far, uh, it's the Royals. Seven zip with uh, 7.15 left in the third quarter. Coming out to take a look at this one, Joe. is close enough they want to measure. The gentleman with the white hat kind of eyeballed that one, and it looks like uh, we're still a little bit short. So call it uh, third and inches at the 46-yard line. The Maroons need to capitalize here. They need to keep the drive alive. Sayavong, one wide receiver, double tight end. And he gets stuck in the backfield. A Boy, big play by Larkin. He read that one. Very good play. Adam Lance in on there. Smell that one coming down the middle. Made a very good play. Got a little help afterward, but it really wasn't needed. He was on his own. Very nice read. Adam Lance of Larkin labeled him in the backfield. 6'1", 225. And I got a feeling most of that is some solid muscle. And uh, I think uh, when you got third and inches, uh, you have to come up with something like that there. You yeah, can't have a Yeah, that was a, a very down. big play. That was a big play, Joe. Here we go, fourth down, and it looks like we're going to have to turn the ball over there. They were hurting on that one. Boney to punt. Iser and Schneider are the deep backs. Nice snap. Plenty of time. He hangs a high one. And they, they let it take a roll, and it bounces uh, right at the 22, 23-yard line. Going to be first down. The Larkin Royals will take over. Let's see if they can put together a drive like they had in that first quarter, Joe, when he opened up this ball game. Uh, see how they, how well they're going to mix these these plays now. We're going to have a couple sweeps, some options. We're going to throw that pigskin out to our top receiver out there, Nemers. He's looking for something. Okay, it's just a quick hitter to uh, Iser. He bowls over the left side for a gain of about two. Let's call it second and eight. Seven nothing Larkin. In this cross down rival, uh, fighting for the pride of Elgin, fighting for the jug. The town jug. The town jug. They could at least fill and it with a, nickels or and something. It's a big they? jug. I, I picked it up and took a look at it. They got all the scores on the side there. Okay, Green Hegel up the middle to Schneider. And he pounds for about, about a good six yards. Very nice gain. Block, uh, some good blocking up there. The tackle by 44. Uh, Rob Walker. So third and a yard. Make it probably a long yard. Almost two. Five minutes left in the third quarter. Green Hagel ducks behind his center Kaufman. Full house backfield. Gives it to Taylon, and he's nice got a lot play, of play. Nice play, Taylon nice play. Maybe Some one or two men going to get him, if at all. Catching up with him. Very down. nice tackle from behind. But a big run by Kyle Taylon, the fullback. We've got somebody down in the middle of the field here. The officials are kind of separating a couple of players here. I think maybe they just literally almost like blocked equipment, like face masks or something, but. Uh, Fantastic run. Tackle from behind. That wasn't my man Carrington coming into the could act again, Could have been Carrington, it? it could have been Brooks, but uh, I got anyway. A, I got a feeling with that blinding speed from behind, I think that was Carrington coming in on that, that saving tackle at about, where are we, Joe? We down about the six yard line? Seven yard line. Very uh, nice run. What a call by Haley. Uh, smart, you know, smart call, nice. just a power call. Uh, Carl Taylon, he's averaging about 4.2 yards a pop. Uh, they only needed uh, two, and, uh, and he got about a good 60, 60 yards on that carry. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, Royals opportunity now. The, the momentum's in their pocket. Let's see how we're going to handle this one, gentlemen. Okay, Green Hagel behind the center, Kaufman. We're looking at a, an option. Play. Green nice Hagel carries it himself, and he's in for the touchdown. Very nice call. Roger Green Hagel on the option. Pretty spin move again, Joe. Spins in from seven yards out to give Larkin a comfy 
13-0 lead. That's a hard man to stop when you're one-on-one. -on -one. Six foot five, 210 pounds. So, Green Hagel, they ran the option again. Larkin likes power football. Todd Cinco for the point after. There's the snap, the kick is up, and it is good. 14-0, Larkin on top. A nice scoring drive put together by the Royals here. Below midway into the third quarter now. Kind of taking over a little control of this ball game here now. 14 to zip. Uh, you better believe it. The Crosstown Maroons realize the situation. Four minutes left in the quarter. They, they've got to put something together now. We're, we're into the third quarter. Uh, they need a score. They really need a score. This will be a very important possession now on this kickoff. That's right. Uh, the Royals are in command. They're roughing them up a little bit uh, on, on the lines. They're not able to, uh, to mount a, a ground attack at all. Joe, what was that run there? What did we have on that big run there? 60, 60 yards? Yeah, it was about 60 yards. Fantastic, fantastic play. All so right, gentlemen, put the foot to it, fellas. Jerome Gostin with the kick. Short line drive kick, and it's a line drive. It goes right to LeBrian Carrington. He's going to try and sweep to the outside. Oh, and he just couldn't elude a, a royal tackle. Otherwise, he would have had a wall set up on the far side. Looked like the Bulldog hanging on to the postman's foot there for a minute. He wouldn't let go. Very well put, Wes. First down, Maroons. It's, uh, destiny is in your hands, fellas. First and 10 at the 25. That's where Elgin will start. And uh, Coach Stevens, uh, I think, uh, has to throw it up in the air a little bit. He's got Brady Bailey on one side, Jake Kilgore on the other. Pet Sayabong behind his center, Danny Tripp. And Saibon drops back to pass. You're right, Joe. He's got Weber to tight end. Great catch, a great catch. Popped him just when the ball got there and uh, certainly had the ability to hang on to that ball. Rick Short put a good, real good hit on him. But uh, that receiver is uh, octopus arms, I guess you'd call that, right, Joe? Uh, well, Greg Weber, uh, he's a big tight end, six foot, uh, 185. That'd be the kind Ditka likes, I believe. Excellent catch for a first down, of course. and. Uh, a real nice way to start out their drive for the Maroons here. It looks like uh, they're heading south, and that's where the goalpost is. Well, you got to put it up, you know what I mean? 14 nothing, and you haven't been able to do a thing on the ground, so we'll see what happens. Sayabong parts out the signals, and he's going to drop back to pass again. First down pass, Joe. And it's caught by Ronnie Washington. Eludes a tackle. Very nice little move, trying to step over that first tackler that was down on his knees. He just step, stepped over his arm to get around him, and boom, he got popped. Uh, it was a nice move. He got another extra, extra yard out of it. Okay, call it a gain of nine, second and one, ball at the 49. Nice place to be, second and one, Joe. Lay, uh, leaves you a little option here as a coach to maybe uh, experiment. This could be a, uh, an extra credit play. Extra credit, that always helps out when the, when the grades are going sour. Sayabong takes a look, drops back to pass, it's a draw. Nice call, a nice ball, good block coming he up here. Outside, Beautiful block. It's at the 40, and he's tackled at the 38 yard line. A real nice call. Nice call is, is right, Wes. Uh, I think uh, Larkin uh, sort of got lulled to sleep saying, uh-oh, they're going to pass on us again. And, uh, and they fooled them with Boney. We've got to give credit to uh, Greg Weber on that. Uh, very nice, nice block right in the center of the field there to spring that for another five or six yards. Very nice play. And I think, Wes, that, uh, that blocks, you know, in the middle of the field uh, is something that... Uh, that uh, gets overlooked, and, and uh, it, it's good that you were able to pick that up. You know, you see blocks like this in high school level, you know, and uh, it, 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 the kids in the enthusiasm of wanting to throw and level somebody have the tendency to throw that illegal block, you know, the one that's uh, that blocked below the waist, et cetera, and here's, here's Weber, an opportunity to spring his man. He threw a nice chest block, hit him right on the numbers, and took a potential tackler right out of the play. You notice we haven't seen that many little yellow flags flying around here. A little encroachment play here and there. Another false start, but for the most part, we're, uh, we're flagless. No, just good force football. Sayabong, first and 10 at the 38-yard line. Backs the pass, and he's eludes a rush. Jerome Gostin's on him. Oh, let's see, does he come up with a catch? No, he does not. It's incomplete. But Sayavong did a nice job eluding the tackle. And Boy, he sure did on that one. He had an, uh, a 
Defender coming right at him there. In fact, his own man trying to help out and block there. Literally pushed that, uh, that blue shirt right at him, uh, putting him in even more danger to tackle. Jay Kilgore, the intended receiver on that, uh, just gave it all he got. A, a great dive uh, to try and come up with the ball, but uh, just couldn't come up with it. We're throwing the ball now on first down a little bit more often here. Uh, they're starting to smell it out a little bit, freeing those linemen to come directly for that quarterback. We're maybe going to have to keep him honest here and throw a draw at him. Okay, single receiver, far side. Split backfield, Sayabong. Inside handoff. Looks like no gain, Joe. Nope. Uh, got to the line of scrimmage. And that's about it. Boney wasn't able to, to leave anywhere. Coming so down to uh, a minute and 30 with a third and 10, Joe. This is a uh, this will be an important play for, for Elgin. They're, they're going to have to demonstrate that they uh, they can pick up a first down there. Big play. They have to demonstrate that uh, that they can come through uh, when their backs are to the wall and, and, they're, and they're pinned up against the wall right now. Sayavong receivers draped left and right. Sayavong drops back to pass, heaves it over the middle, and it's, uh, let's see, it's intercepted. Intercepted, Sayavong just threw the ball. Just up for grabs. Brett Nemers came up with the, the interception, so he catches them uh, on the offensive side, and he catches them on the defensive side. Big rush by uh, Joel Jossert on that play. Made, made him get rid of that ball a little bit earlier.